This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Ting. Hello everyone on the internet. This week I wanted to give you my top four IRC clients for a series of different operating systems. Throughout my life I've moved from you know Windows, I've used a little bit of Mac, and of course I've been using Linux quite a lot lately. And I've been trying to find the best IRC clients for you know every series of operating system that I've been using. So I have a couple of kind of historical IRC uh, clients that you can use. I also have a couple of newer ones which you might be interested in, even one for the terminal. So let's get right into it with my number four choice. This one is called IRSSI, IRC, and it's a command line Unix program for IRC, completely open source, which is the best part of course, and it started in 1999, so it's totally old school. One really cool thing about IRSSI is that there is a plugin available to add encryption to your chats, which is really cool. And it also includes a really handy documented tutorial on the website to start using it. So if you check out my terminal, it's really easy to get connected. You simply uh, download it, of course, and then you type in IRSSI. And this is a simple apt get. Once you get connected, you type in connect irc.hack5.org or wherever you want to go. Once you get connected, you can slash join to pound hack5 or whichever one you decide to join. And look, you can see everybody that's joined in and I can get right into the chats. Of course, it's also very, very easy to quit out of it if you wanted to. You basically just use all the same IRC commands that you're pretty much used to if you're familiar with it. So I would just hit slash quit to quit right back out and it'll take you right back to your terminal. Now. It may seem a little bit complicated at first because there are no directions that it really gives you up front. So definitely go to their website and work through all the different uh, directions that they give you on there. So while I do think that command line IRC clients are a little bit more complicated for day-to-day -day users, there's still a couple of my favorites for a quick chat. I had to install IRSSI with aptitude first and then connect over was a piece of cake after that. So the tutorial on their website, go check it out for that one. Now for number three, which is ba -ba -ba, Chatzilla, of course. Now this one is basically a plugin for Mozilla Firefox. It's an extension that works in Windows or Linux, which is great, so you don't have to choose between one or the other. This one basically serves up a really, really easy GUI for anybody that's a new IRC user, and it's really super easy to install. So if I go down here, and it'll take me just a moment to uh, pull up Firefox. So you pull it up on here and then you go down to tools and you simply open Chatzilla. And this opens up a completely new browser for you. And of course it uses all the same different IRC commands that you're used to again. So it's very simple to use. It also has a nice GUI interface. So if you're very new to IRC, it's gonna be really easy to get right into it. And it's really easy to install, it's just a plugin. So, you know, big deal there. Now, number two, MIRC. Yay! I mean, who doesn't use this one, right? So this is what I got into at the very beginning, pretty much, is when I, way before I discovered XChat, which is now my favorite. Now, I totally gave away number one, didn't I? It's only for Windows, which kind of stinks, but it also has a really great interface, which makes it really easy to connect, to save all your favorite channels. It feels really similar to XChat on the graphical interface side, and it's really popular. I mean, everybody uses it, so there's plenty of directions available online, but again, this one's only available for Windows. So of course, I can't really show you how to use it on my Linux machine right Right now, but unless I like VPN into a Windows box, but I really don't want to do that on the, my e i3. It doesn't work so well. So I'll go ahead and go straight into my number one choice, which is XChat. This is definitely my favorite. I've been using it for years because it's really easy to use. It's got a great interface. You can set up all sorts of automatic connections if you need to, and you can even plug in all your favorite different uh, channels if you need to. The availability is on all of my operating systems, so it's really open. Although the Windows version says that it's a 30-day trial, but you know, you're just downloading trials. It's available as a command line version or a graphical version, and it is GNU licensed. So they also have a very easy tutorial on their website as well, xchat.org. This one, I actually set up an automatic connection to the Hack5 IRC. So for example, every time I open up xchat, let me go ahead and close out of these, hit xchat it automatically connects me to the Hack5 IRC channel. 
and it's super fast, very efficient, logs straight in for me because uh, that was crazy easy to install and crazy easy to uh, customize for myself. But of course, you know, that's not all of them. I mean, this is obviously a simple interface and I could easily install Biddleby on here if I needed to again to get into Twitter and whatnot. But these aren't the only clients available out there. If you search for IRC clients, there's like 40 different ones. So I've only checked out maybe 10 of them, some which break and some are totally janky, but these four work really well. But I wanna know what you guys use because plenty are available for all of the operating systems. There's a great Wikipedia link to several of them in the show notes. So let me know which ones you want to choose and which ones you decide that you like the best. What have you been using for years? So send those over to me, feedback at hack5.org. We do read all of those emails. And I may do another roundup of your favorite picks. Coming up, Technolust photo of the week. But first, a quick break. break. As a phone freak growing up in the 90s, I never thought that I'd say that I love a phone service. But I must say, Ting has won me over because it's the complete opposite of the whole playing field right now in wireless. You know, it's riddled with so many confusing, confusing policies and arbitrary rules and penalties and premiums and really a bunch of crap that you pay for that you're not even using. And this is why I love the guys at Ting. This is why I have like three Ting phones and three Ting data devices because these geeks, they're, they're cool. They're up in Canada, so you know they're chill. And they decided that they were going to totally change the game when it comes to mobile phones. And here's what I love. Not only only do they just pick up the phone when you call support there's no like phone tree it's just like hey I'm a human let me help you and they're passionate about this but they built an MVNO network on the Sprint network delivering uh, Android devices with LTE 4G and get this I love this fair and honest pricing that's what it's all about right megabytes minutes and text messages are all built separately which for geeks is awesome because I don't use that many minutes right you only pay for what you use so if you use too much you just uh, you're just build the appropriate amount and if you use too little too little you're just credited the difference really you don't even need, need to worry about the plans but if you'd like to see how it stacks up to your existing service go over to hack5.ting.com and check out their online savings calculator it's a really helpful tool to compare what you might be doing right now with what you could be doing with ting i know i've switched over all of my friends have switched over in fact i'm using it right here in the van plugged into a Wi-Fi pineapple and a signal booster here, which is great because this thing is like a Faraday cage. Now with a nice little antenna on the roof, I've always got service. I love it. So uh, again, check it out at hack5.ting.com and we thank them for their support of Hack5 and Hack Across America. It's time for my favorite part of the show, the Technolus photo of the week, and this one comes from Billy. He sends us these photos of his lair and he says, so I had just finished up my CentOS home server and I thought I'd snap a pic of it and my others for the show before I moved it off of my workbench. On the CentOS pic, there is a Windows 7 HTPC running the media center for the TV in here. The Windows box, just a typical Windows PC, custom build, gaming PC. My main use computer is the iMac with a 42 inch TV next to it. And there's also an Xbox 360 behind it and an HDMI switch for when I need to take programming or design breaks. And PS, how is SF compared to Virginia? And Billy, I actually love SF. It's one of my favorite places in the world and I am so thankful that I finally got to move out here. I gotta say, I've been an army brat all my life and this is the one place that I'm totally cool with staying at for like the rest of my life. I love it out here. So thank you so much for sharing, Billy. And if you guys have photos, you can send those over to feedback at hack5.org with the subject line, Technolust, and we'll be happy to share them on the show. 